Amen. What a beautiful way to begin worship. My name is Sean, and I'm so excited to have you here in worship. I'm the pastor here at Centralia United Methodist Church, and it's a delight to be in worship both here with those of you who are gathered in our presence and those who are joining us online, either live with us right now or sometime later. We're so delighted to be with each and every one of you. If you are here in the room, just want to let you know some things that are going on around here. If you are looking for nursery care, we have that back in the back hallway. If you want to go down this hallway to the right and turn right, you can find nursery care there for ages zero to four. You can also find restrooms down that same hallway on the right, all the way down there to your right. And there's so much more, excuse me, happening in this church community um, besides what's happening here on Sunday morning. You can find all that information there in your bulletin. Also around you, you should find this gold card here. And if you could fill that out with as much information as you feel comfortable for us to let us know you're in worship with us. It also lets us know how you might like to be involved in our community, how we can be in prayer for you. And you can simply drop those in the offering plates there in the back on your way out today. And we're going to continue on in our Advent series, Home for Christmas, where we're talking about how our home and the presence of Jesus brought to us at Christmas and how we can bring that home to others. So Jesus brought that home to us, and now it is our job to bring that home to others. And on December 19th for worship, as a part of that, we're going to have a music-led service that I'm very excited about that Ted and the music team have been working hard on, and I hope that you will join us and bring somebody with you for a morning of music-led worship where we're going to hear beautiful music, and we're going to sing together, and we're going to hear from God's Word that morning as well. So please do join us on December 19th for that. I'm very excited for that. But today... We're going to pray together, we're going to hear from God's word, we're going to sing together, and we're even going to take communion together, where all people are invited, with no exceptions. You can come and receive the presence of God through communion together. And I'm so excited to get started. Let's stand to our feet and sing together in our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. You may be seated. The Advent scripture reading is from Luke chapter 3, verse 2b through 6, which does differ from your bulletin. We had a quick change. At this time, a message from God came to John, son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. Then John went from place to place on both sides of the Jordan River, preaching that people should be baptized to show that they had repented of their sins and turned to God to be forgiven. Isaiah had spoken of John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, 
Prepare the way for the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. The valleys will be filled and the mountains and hills made level. The curves will be straightened and the rough places made smooth. And then all people will see the salvation sent from God. For many of us, the call to head home is one of joy and of hope. We can't wait to reconnect with family, with history and tradition, with a wonderful time of freedom and loving support. We can't wait to go home. There are those who fear going home, however, and there are times when going home brings back memories that are not so good, not so healing. We are reminded of when we didn't fit in, when we didn't measure up, when we weren't loved like we needed to be loved. Home can be a difficult place for some. The prophet Malachi tells us that even when we are in the hottest of fires, there is a presence who can make us better, who can refine and purify. John the Baptist tells us that the road home is always under construction, mountains leveled and valleys filled in to make smooth the path that leads us to our true destination where we can live in peace and unity with all. We light these candles, the candle of hope and the candle of peace, as a sign of our assurance that though the road is hard, we believe it is worth the journey. It is time to go home. We invite you now to respond to our reading and song. should be on the screen. O come, O come, Emmanuel. And to be light for our darkness. Be comfort in our grief. Be a friend for our loneliness. And an oasis for our searching. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Restore our joy, heal our wounds, and bring us peace. Amen. 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 I want to let you guys know about some more stuff that's coming up in the life of our church ministry that we are super, super excited about. Uh, today, there's something awesome going on out there in the fellowship hall, which is just out these doors and to your left inside the church. Our kids and youth are going to be uh, leading a wrap and give project, which means you have time today. They're going to be here till 2.30. You have time today to bring presents to them. Uh, they even gave me an example to show all of you that they do tremendous work. You can bring your gifts to them, uh, and they will wrap them for you. It's totally free, but they are taking a free will offering in support of um, our partnership with our Christmas families, which are families here in our area that um, we work with through the, the city, where we can provide them with household needs and presents this time of year. And so if you have presents sitting around the house like I do that need to be wrapped, you can bring them here, and we can get that done for you, courtesy of our kids in our year. Youth. And they are staying busy because on uh, December the 12th, next Sunday at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary, they're going to be leading a very mixed up Christmas pageant that's a ton of fun, and we want to invite you guys to be a part of that. They've been working so, so hard on it, and we're very proud of them, and so come show support next Sunday um, evening, afternoon at 5 p.m., right here. And coming up this Tuesday, um, December 7th, the United Methodist women are having a Christmas carry-in meal that they want to invite you to. They're going to be doing an ornament exchange. Just a fun Christmas party with the United Methodist women that we would love for you to be a part of on Tuesday evening here at 6, 6 p.m. at the church. You can always give us a like or a follow on Facebook and check our website out as well to see what's happening all of the time. Because there's this and so much more. You can also check out your bulletin to find out more. And Laura's going to come up and share another Good morning. Um, I have a few items of congregational care. Um, we had um, the Kriegler family celebrated Justin's life yesterday. Please con con continue to keep them in prayer. Um, Justin had a cat who was his little buddy, and so they are now trying to find a home for the cat. I can't remember his name, but he's a very nice, classic tabby cat, very loving and friendly. 
so let me know if you're interested in a cat, Christmas cat. <laughs> um, also, and, and please continue to keep them in prayer. And also as we continue to pray for the Nix family and Dwayne on his long road of recovery from COVID, Debbie's work group is organizing a benefit auction and I believe they're going to conduct it mainly as an online thing on Facebook, but there will be a way for other folks to participate also. The, the, so right now they are seeking donations for this auction and they would like to have those turned in as soon as possible. Um, so let me know if you have anything that might work if you want to donate to an online auction. And then the information on bidding on that, we will email that out this week. And then finally, Margaret Johnson, who is one of our church matriarchs, who pretty much stays at home these days. Um, she is needing a ride to the doctor's office in Columbia this Thursday. So any of those things, if you would like to help out with, please contact me in the office and uh, note on the back of your bulletin, Monday and Thursday, the office hours are a little different than normal. Tomorrow will be just 2 to 5 p.m. Thank you. will be, am I good? Okay, we will be hosting the Youth and Children next Saturday, so maybe keep us in your prayers. Um, we will do that around 4.30 following the Christmas pageant rehearsal. Um, pickup time is kind of fluent. You can kind of come, but please do come get your kids if you bring them. Don't leave them with us. Um, and have them just wear their Christmas shirts or their Christmas pajamas, something comfy. So next Saturday. Okay. Any other announcements, real quick? I think what we're gonna try to do, um, it's just in the interest of time, we're gonna try to do these by sections and stuff, so we're gonna start in this section. You got joys, concerns, or announcements, just kinda do them right there, and we'll kinda move across this way, so. So get them all, get them all prepared. prepared. Um, we would like to invite you to our home or our home away from home, the barn, for a Christmas in the barn on the 23rd of December at 6.30. Um, it's a simple time to enjoy the life of Christ, the birth of Christ. Um, Dad will usually read some scripture, tell some stories, and a few jokes, of course. Uh, it lasts maybe 45 minutes or an hour, but we park in the pasture, and it's in the barn on Straw Bill, so dress appropriately for the weather. I do feel right at home in a barn, that's for sure. We are really busy this time of year. Today for youth group, um, we are meeting at 4 and leaving by 4.15 because we're going to be going Christmas caroling. So be here at 4 o'clock today. Okay. Yesterday afternoon, Andrew Trask, who is Bob and Sandy's grandson, fell at a birthday party um, at the Sky Zone. I think that's the correct name. Anyway, he has broken his leg. Um, um, I think he went home last night to be home, goes back to the doctor tomorrow and, and may possibly have to have surgery on that. But anyway, so keep him um, and his mom and Bob and Sandy in your prayers and Ryan, his dad. Will do. Is that anybody else over here? About in this section, any joys, concerns? Stephanie? Um, Emily graduated from Central Methodist University on Friday night. It was a really beautiful, meaningful um, ceremony, and we're awful proud of her. She also received a surprise honor. Um, so anyway, now we're back to wedding planning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you the next, yeah. Very good. It's an honor just to be in your presence this morning, so it's good. It's a surprise honor for us. Any other joys or concerns over here? Yep, John. I want to thank the people from the church and other friends that came out to say, no, what's up? Yeah, we're glad to be there to support you in that. Any other joys, concerns here? How about over here? No. Oh, yep. Ma Jerry, she's got it. Um, I just want to congratulate Sophie for getting the Panther Pride thing. 
for the month. Um, and also Amanda is in, Amanda, Becca, sorry about that, is in the Builders Club at eighth grade middle school there and they're collecting um, pencils and crayon books, puzzles, anything like that. They have to be new to go to the hospital for their children. And you go to Dollar Tree and you spend five or ten dollars and you'd be amazed what you can get. So, and I think the Kiwanis are with us too. Do you have anything else to add, Bill? So, yeah, to put stuff. <laughs> so you can support Bill's box or, or help the eighth graders, but I don't know. We'll let you guys fight that out. So, any other joyous concerns? How about over here? Do you raise your hand, Sally, too? Well, we're, you're worth talking to. It's fine. I was just going to say that we have the pleasure of getting to see Lauren and Raul for a couple of days later this week, and then uh, we're going to take them back to Chicago so they can fly home. So prayers for a quick flight uh, from Munich to Chicago and back, and also we're going to stop and see Joyce Eads uh, on the way home. So we'll say hi for everybody. Very good, very good. How about you, Sandy? A great big thank you to Mary Ann for giving me a ride to the hospital yesterday to see Andrew. And uh, Andrew needs prayers. He's in a lot of pain, waiting for surgery, I believe, on Tuesday. And uh, his mom, Rhiannon, uh, also needs prayers. <laughs> She's caring as well for her mother, who has suffered a stroke and is living with her. So things are kind of complicated in Trask land. So, so thank you, Mary Ann, especially. Yeah. Thank you. Any, any others? Back that up. Please keep my dad in prayer. He's suffering with kidney stone and urinary tract issues. And Tom had gone over this weekend to help fix fence. They had cattle getting out. And instead, they ended up making three trips to the uh, emergency room back and forth. Um, he's supposed to see the urologist tomorrow. So prayers, please. <laughs> Yeah, it's a joy to uh, be working with the high school music department uh, with the uh, Madrigal. We uh, started that on uh, Friday, last night, again, another good show. And we finish up this afternoon uh, with the show, and then everything gets torn down, which would be a lot of fun, I'm sure. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. Oh, sorry. Um, one of my piano students' parents was involved in a really serious accident on Thursday night that was caused by a, a stolen vehicle car chase in Columbia, and so she was hit by this car, and she's in the hospital right now, and it's very serious, so please keep her in prayer. Yeah, wow. We'll do it. Okay. It was really kind of hard on my exercise program doing it that way, but we worked out. But I'm going to do this but off, uh, off, uh, out of memory, too, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, if you guys will bow with me. Dear God, I just thank you for this day, this second Sunday in Advent, God, where we're anticipating the coming of Christ, God. And I thank you for this time together where we can share ourselves and share joy with each other, God, and, and our concerns, God. Help us to lift each other up. Lord, I just pray for, uh, I pray for that barn, <laughs> time together in the barn where we come to be close to you and, and, uh, and with that, uh, uh, that, that experience of, of being there in a manger to, to know what Christ is coming, God. We thank you for that, and we thank you for Mary Ann and her willingness to help and to drive, but uh, we lift up to you the Andrew Trask and, and his mom and, and uh, that whole situation, Lord. Just be with that. God, we thank you that, uh, that you're there and uh, have a hand on that. And Lord, we lift up to you, John, and, and, um, and his, his heart and uh, his passing of his wife, God, and he still, he still hurts. And, uh, but we thank you for the support that this church and, and people here have given him in that. 
God, we lift up to you, Emily, as she's switching to another chapter of life, God, and we thank you for, uh, for that graduation and that special time in her life, and we just pray for the preparation for the wedding, God. Lord, we lift up to you the, uh, the, the gathering of supplies between the Kiwanas and the seventh and eighth graders, and God, we just lift that up to you. Uh, we thank you for that opportunity. Lord, we're glad to see Tim and his family here today and uh, the, all the joy that it is to have them together with us today. And Lord, um, uh, we lift up to you uh, the magical celebration, God, and all the, all the joy that was there. Uh, and uh, just that last performance, God, goes well today, God. And we just thank you for the effort and the time that uh, Scott puts into that and, and the kids and, and the rest of the music staff. Um, Lord, we lift up Megan's uh, friend at, uh, in the hospital. Uh, just be with her and uh, uh, help that to uh, heal and to not be so scary and um, uh, that concern to, to uh, just be with the doctors and, and take care of that, Lord. Uh, it's, a sad, it's a scary situation to be a part of, God, and we just uh, pray that you're there and can help comfort through that. God, we lift up any of those other concerns out there this morning, any other people in this church that have concerns in their hearts, uh, people at home that are watching at home today, God, that uh, we lift them up to you. And, uh, and we lift up the Kriglers as they uh, just uh, put to rest their son and uh, brother and grandson, God. Uh, that's, that's tough, God. We just pray, though, Justin's in a better place and, uh, and is running and feeling free. And uh, Lord, um, we do love you and we praise you and we pray for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. If the kids want to come up to this front pew, they can. sneak through there. Is this everybody? Okay, sweet. Good morning. How's everybody? Okay, I'm going to ask you guys a question, and please be honest. Raise your hand if you make your bed every single day. Oh, Miss Ella. <laughs> when do you guys make your bed? Never? Is there any occasion in which your mom or dad might make you make your bed? No? When you put new sheets on them, Mia? Yeah. <laughs> well, anytime I make my bed, if I ever have to clean my room or clean any part of my suite or my dorm, I always make my bed because I feel like it brings everything together and makes it really nice. And so what if I told you guys that we're gonna do a little cleaning today? Do you, do you want this? No? Do you want this? Here, do you, you want this? Ella's the, only, Ella's the only one, guys, remember that. Take her home with you. You want this? Yeah, you, oh, okay, all right. What are, what are some times that your parents might clean? What are some occasions that they might clean for? Family. family. Family coming. Do you guys ever run the holidays? Do you ever have your parents hustling, running around, getting stuff ready and prepared? Yes, yes. And if you're ever around when mom and dad are around, do they ever ask you to help out? Yes. Grayson, oh, Grayson's like, no, I'm not helping. <laughs> okay, so what if I told you that in today, earlier when they were reading the scripture in the book of Luke, there was a guy named John, also known as John the Baptist, and he went around all around the country and all around the Jordan River, and he told everybody to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Do you think that he meant cleaning? No. Do you think he meant making your bed? No. What did John mean to prepare for the coming of Jesus? Hmm, tough question. Prepare for the coming of Jesus. The season of Advent is actually a waiting period for the coming of the baby Jesus. What it, could it mean to prepare? Well, in the book of Luke, John says to prepare our hearts for the coming of Jesus. Do you guys know what that means? What does it mean to prepare our hearts? Have you guys ever had to prepare for something, like maybe a sports event, maybe a test, maybe a birthday party? Does it take a lot of planning, studying, practice, 
asking a lot of preparation, time, thinking, and reflecting. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's the same exact thing right now. Right now we're in a period of waiting for the baby Jesus. And so while we're preparing for Jesus, we're also preparing our hearts for God. We're thinking, what gifts does God give us? What ways can we serve God better? What ways can we get closer to Jesus? So I want you guys to think about that. And today we're going to talk a little bit about peace. And so what ways can we bring peace to our lives? And what ways can we bring peace to God and have a relationship to get closer to Jesus Christ? Will you guys pray with me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for this season of waiting. Thank you for this season of waiting. And we ask you to prepare our hearts. And we ask you to prepare our hearts. We ask to be open to you. We ask to be open to you. And for you to bring us peace. And for you to bring us peace. In Christ's name we pray. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I think we have a candy basket now. So if you guys want to take a piece of candy. <laughs> you don't want one? Okay. I invite you to join me in prayer, and as you close your eyes, I just invite you to take a couple of deep breaths to center ourselves. Amen. 
in a time of exciting preparation. We're in a, a time of preparation to receive and, the, and let that anticipation continue to build as we move closer. So it is our time in our service where we get to celebrate and give uh, our offerings and ties back to news is God gives us so many gifts. And it's just an act. It's an act of being able to celebrate. You can uh, make donations online. You can send a check to the church. You, there are so many ways. And it's also really exciting in this season swarm of people next to the tree. And so I think there's still a few ornaments left in the community so they can have a good Christmas. And we'll need those back. And if it's your first time in worship with us, we ask and know that so us in so many ways. And we know that, that what we give back to you is just a tiny fraction of the gifts of time and resources and energy and just the ability to breathe and we are so, so thankful. We also trust and know that with your uh, presence that, that our gifts will be multiplied and grow and also serve those around us. And we trust and know that it will be multiplied. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I invite you to stand for our hymn in the bleak midnight winter, verses one and four. Today's scripture reading is from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of his, the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier's silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in the days gone by as in former years. The word of, the God, word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. It is the second week of Advent already. It's hard to believe we're less than three weeks away from Christmas Day, less than three weeks away from Christmas Eve even. And we're going to continue our series called Home for Christmas. I touched on it in a bit earlier, but the reason we're doing this is because during the Advent season, we're reminded that the home we have now is, is an already and not yet home. We are already witnesses to the kingdom of God through the person of Jesus and the acts of the Holy Spirit. And yet we know that we are not entirely yet home. There is more still to come, and there is better still to come, and more still to hope for. And last week we talked about 
hope about how Jesus was, was pointing to a fig tree and said, when you see this fig tree start to bud and to leave and to grow life, you know that spring is coming. And we talk about how Christmas comes in the darkness. It comes in the cold. And there's a reason for that. As Christians, we have a hope even in the darkest times, even in the coldest nights, even in the midst of the longest desperation. And this week, we're going to talk about how we have peace in the home of Jesus. When our world often inspires more feelings of disturbance and fear, we find peace in the home of Jesus. And you know, I was raised by a couple of, of great parents. They're still like my best friends in the world, truly. And, and my parents will tell you, I overall, I think, uh, was a pretty easy kid to raise. I didn't get in too terribly much trouble, like, you know, regular uh, childish, you know, mischievous streaks and things like that, but no major troubles and, and things like that. Um, and so uh, even as a teenager, I, I didn't create too much issues. You had your regular teenage angst, you know what I mean? So parents of kids, like, no, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better, and you can and you will have Uh, lifelong friendships with your children, and and I know that you can look forward to that. But no, even in the midst of the teenage angst, (laughs) it's okay. That's normal, um, and it's going to get better. But my dad was was a first career pastor. I never knew anything else from my dad. That's how how he was from um, the time he finished school to in the time that I was was born. He was in church ministry as a pastor. And my mom is an administrative wizard, and she would work in administrative positions on and off, and at times she would stay as a stay-at-home mom. But when we got to be a little bit older, and we got to be old enough, when both of my parents were working, at times my brother and I were, were latchkey kids, which just meant for a couple hours after school we'd come home, and, um, and we would be at home and, and be home by ourselves until mom and dad got home. Back in the day, it was crazy, guys. Like, they would even let us go out on our bikes and go to our friend's house and stuff. Like, nowadays, you got to lock it, close the blinds, turn all the lights off in the house. Like, this is a world gone by. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm 28 years old, and I'm like, kids these days, you know? Um, <laughs> But it was, just, it was just different. But we were latchkey kids at times. Not always, because sometimes, like I said, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. And I remember when we come home, there would often be like a sheet on the kitchen table or kitchen island or something, and it would have the list of items that were expected to be accomplished before mom and dad got home. Things from like, make sure that you take the chicken out of the fridge so it can have an extra couple hours of thaw so it's ready for dinner. Please make sure your room is clean. That was probably the big... Maybe we needed a vacuum in the living room or whatever. And normally, you know, you see it and you're like, okay, but you've just got done. School is long and you've been there all day. So you're just like, I've seen a minute on the couch. And so you, you're, you're on the couch, you're chilling, you're watching after school cartoons or whatever. And I had my list and I heard that garage door open. <laughs> oh man. I was no longer at peace after school. I was in a rush and, you know, just trying to do whatever I possibly could in 30 seconds to, to say, yeah, yeah, I did that. And it's like, man, I don't know why the chicken's not thought. I took it out as soon as I got home like you told me to. You know, if, if when we got a little bit older even, you know, and, and cell phones became particularly even more normal for us to have, then we, we might get lucky and get a call and say, I'm on my way home. Oh, that was the best. I got an extra 20 minutes. I could get everything done. Then, no problem. But it was like, oh, you know, and she'd, she'd call and say, have you gotten to the list yet? And I'd say, of course, Mom. I got it done as soon as I got home. What do you think I was doing all this time? <laughs> you know, it was that garage door opening that spurred me to action. It spurred me to action. I wasn't spurred to action by the note. I was spurred to action by, oh no, I'm not ready. I haven't done what I was supposed to get done. See, and there, and there are so many times, I think, as, as parent or as former child, we can relate to the story because we probably all have lived that existence at some point. But it relates to things outside of that silly example, Because there are many things in our life that we are asked to do and expected to do, and we do them, and we pray that it measures up. At work, you're expected to perform, and you hope that it measures up to your boss's standards. At school, maybe you're taking a test or writing a paper, and you hope it measures up to the standards for your teacher. 
Maybe you can think of something else. Maybe it's you personally. You are getting ready for the day, and you hope that the way you look and the way you dress measures up to the standards of the place that you're going. You're going to a party with people you've never been to before. You hope your personality meshes with theirs. You hope that you measure up. See, just like how my mom might give me a warning or, or a heads up with the note or with the phone call about what was coming, um, it often wasn't until her actual arrival that I was spurred to do something about it. And in our scripture reading, we hear from the prophet Malachi, who tells us that the Lord Almighty is coming. And he also mentions a future, uh, a future messenger that is going to say that the Lord Almighty is coming and he is coming now. Who might Malachi be referring to? Where are our biblical scholars at? Who is the messenger saying that the Lord is coming? We read from him earlier today. His name? John the Baptist, very good. John the Baptist says, friends, the Lord is coming and he is coming now and it is time to prepare. Well, Malachi actually prophesies about John the Baptist in this passage when he says that there's going to be a messenger who is going to say, prepare for the coming of the Lord. And John the Baptist in Luke's gospel, as we read earlier, says, quoting Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness will say, prepare the way for the Lord and make straight the paths for him. So John the Baptist says, prepare. And Malachi, hundreds of years before him, says, prepare. The Lord is coming. But prepare for what exactly? Elise actually hinted on that idea in the kids' message. Prepare for what are we supposed to prepare for? Prepare for a silent night with a bunch of cute animals and a little baby? Prepare for our favorite time of year? Prepare for what? See, whether we don't feel the heat this time of year um, because we just enjoy it and we don't take too, too many things too close to heart, or maybe we do feel the heat. We prepare for family to come over. We prepare for the shopping that we feel like needs to get done. We prepare for uncomfortable conversations around the dinner table that we just had a couple weeks ago, and we have more around this time. Or maybe some of us still prepare for the judgment that we might feel from family or friends when we get together. See, but it's none of that. That's not the preparation even we're talking about. What Malachi describes is bigger and harsher than that. It's bigger than checking off the items on your shopping list. Malachi offers these thoughts in our preparation. He says, for who can endure the day of his coming? Who can endure the day of the coming of the Lord? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. You see, John the Baptist, who more recently than, than Malachi is pointing to this coming of Jesus, he lived in a world, and of course then Jesus entered into a world that looks a lot like the one that you see today. Looks a lot like my room before the garage door opened. A little messy. A little unprepared. A little not as others might prefer. And Malachi declared the coming of Jesus to and in a messy world as well. John the Baptist told a messy world to prepare. And Jesus entered into yet still, despite the warnings, a messy and unprepared world. See, our house was messy, but the good news is that Christmas has arrived. And Emmanuel is here. So, we are asking ourselves then in our preparations for the coming of the Lord, do we measure up? Who can stand before the Lord when he appears? Will we be able to stand before him now that he has arrived as Malachi warned us? Maybe you can relate to this kind of pressure this time of year because no matter what going home, as we're talking about, looks like for you, if that's something you look forward to, or we all know that home isn't necessarily the place, but it's the people we surround ourselves with, so sometimes going home means people coming to you. But whatever going home looks like with its traditions and expectations, we might go crazy with anxiety of anticipation of this time and this day, or maybe it's, it's harder because we don't look forward to it. We don't have peace with our homecoming because maybe people publicly or privately have made you feel a lack of peace, have made you feel like you don't measure up. 
Now, here's the truth. When we look at this passage from Malachi, and we hear from John the Baptist, and now we relay it into our everyday lives, the truth we all must admit to one another is that none of us measure up. We don't. And if we tell somebody else that they don't measure up, we are not admitting that we don't either. We are just placing our own personal standards on somebody else. Now, it's terrible when, when we judge others or, or others judge us to not measuring up to our human standards. But that's not what Malachi and John the Baptist are talking about. They're talking about the standard of God, which I promise you, nobody in this room measures up to and nobody joining us online measures up to, namely and specifically the guy talking So no matter how ready we try to make ourselves, no matter how clean we try to make our rooms, no matter how we try to present ourselves, we are still left unworthy. If we try to become perfect and ready and prepared on our own, we are never actually going to get prepared. This is the problem that God recognizes Our sinful nature does not allow us to become prepared. But in the midst of these warnings from Malachi and John the Baptist is hope. He will sit, he the Lord, will sit as a refiner, purifying them until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then their offering will be pleasing to the Lord. See, this one that John the Baptist is saying is here and Malachi is saying is coming is the proper judge and is worthy. But the one who comes, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ is the refiner and he doesn't leave us as we are. He doesn't worry that we're not worthy. He comes to make us worthy. He enters into an unworthy world, not to judge it, but to collectively make it worthy of his love. Jesus enters the world into our mess, into even the most dire of situations, and judges. Christ is judge. But Jesus judges not as the world judges. Jesus takes us, and he holds us, and he refines us. That's how God judges. He says, walk with me. Our presence together is my judgment. And he refines us and transforms us, just like Malachi says. You see, this is peace to me. The peace of this season is that it doesn't matter whether we think we measure up. It doesn't matter whether the world thinks we measure up. It doesn't even matter in the presence of God whether we measure up to the sinless and perfect standard of God. Why? Because Emmanuel, God with us, has come to make us worthy. Not because we are worthy, but because Emmanuel, God with us, is and intercedes for us. Not that we shouldn't make effort to live like Jesus and make our lives resemble the love and grace of Jesus, but the peace is Jesus comes not to condemn us, but to transform us. See, even though Jesus has come and we celebrate this annually, I remain sinful annually. I'm still a sinful person. I still make mistakes. I still fall short. But through the grace of Emmanuel and because Jesus has come, I'm no longer seen and counted that way by God Almighty. And neither are you. Because just like Malachi says, now because of Jesus, the offering I bring is worthy. Not because I have something worthy to bring. Whether it's my gifts, my talents, my treasures. But the offering that I bring is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the offering we present to God. And we present it to God through the way we resemble that life and death and resurrection in this life. See, my unholiness is paid for by the only one who is holy. Malachi says that God is willing to be with us through it all. Through all of the sadness, through all of the darkness, through all of the cold, and through all of the pain. Emmanuel is with us, refining us, and shaping us, and transforming us, and counting us as worthy because of the worthiness of Jesus. 
And John the Baptist continues from Isaiah after offering warning to prepare ourselves. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked road shall become straight, the rough smooth. And all people will see God's salvation. John the Baptist says Jesus has come precisely because the world is messy and he's going to clean it. And he has. That all may experience the salvation that God offers. So maybe the idea that Jesus is like the garage door opening shouldn't scare us. We shouldn't be jolted into alertness and try to clean ourselves up. We say, finally, the judge is here and the judge has come to make me worthy. I know my offering is not, but the judge has come to make us worthy. So the question then has to be, how then can we allow Jesus to come into our lives and act in our lives and be present and refine us, as Malachi says? Who do we, like Malachi and John the Baptist, need to invite home for Christmas? Invite home with us, with no judgment and no expectation, because Christ has made that person worthy. How can we prepare the way for Jesus to speak to others and invite them home? Because if if the church is a representation of God's kingdom here on earth, we must admit that it is a shame too many people are tentative to come home. And unfortunately, those inside the church and outside the church have made them feel that way. Because we may convince them that they don't measure up. When we must admit that none of us do. And so how can we dispel that myth that people should prepare themselves before coming home instead of saying, come home and God prepares you? So you should start with us to send that message to the world, that we don't prepare ourselves to come to the kingdom, but that we go to the kingdom and God himself prepares us. See, and that's, that's exactly what the practice of Holy Communion says. Through it, Jesus says, come to me, and I will do the tough and careful work of refining you. I'll share my love and my grace with you, no strings attached to you, come and you receive me, and then I do the work on you. Not you do the work on yourself, and then you come to me. Jesus says, I do the refining for you. And this is why absolutely no one has ever turned away from receiving communion here in the United Methodist Church. Because this is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ who always welcomes and invites all. God comes to us in a special way here. Heaven and earth are met at this table, and I want to invite you to prepare it with me by joining together. You can follow along on the screen. You can also join me in your hymnal if you'd like, beginning on page 13. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right, and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God's power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy are you and blessed is your... Excuse me. (laughs) Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here 
and on these gifts of bread and drink, make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ. That we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, I invite us to share the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I want to invite Craig back up to help me serve communion. As he does that, I just want to give you a couple ladies of land. You'll come and we'll give you a, one of these cups that has them combined bread on one side and juice on the other. You receive those. You're free to come to the kneeler if you'd like afterward. If you want to return to your seat, you're welcome to do that as well. But come and kneel. Spend as long as you would like as there will be no dismissal. You'll come to the center aisle and then come receive from us in the center aisle here. There's also gluten-free elements available up here as well upon request if that is something that you need. So please let us know that. All are welcome. All are invited. The table is set. Let's join the presence of God. Put my mask.
Amen. Let's respond to the grace that we've received through communion by rising to our feet and singing together our closing hymn. Amen. With the peace that we have that surpasses understanding, may we share it with the world, knowing that we are not worthy, but Christ counts us as worthy. May we count those around us worthy as well. Amen.